So what do most successful companies have in common? Well, most successful companies have in common is a thriving culture. And what do I mean by thriving culture? I mean that people are inspired to be uh, or inspired to be a part of a thriving culture. Now at Zappos, culture is our main focus. Um, we, uh, we align our culture around what we call these 10 core values. And our 10 core values don't just hang on a wall. Our 10 core values are committable core values. And when I say committable, I mean we hire and fire based on these core values. Now, um, what if, uh, and, and, and it's not easy having a great culture. It takes a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of effort, a lot of sweat. But what if you took all of that time, effort, thought, and sweat and turned that outside of your office walls? What if you focused that on your community and your city? Uh, no video? Oh. We'll, we'll have it, just a second. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When you've got worries, all the noise and the hurry seems to help, I know. One of our core values is to create fun and a little weirdness, and that's why we think that the whole downtown environment would be perfect for that east of Fremont area. It, it's interesting because one of my favorite other towns to visit is Austin, where they have 4th Street and 6th Street, and some of the people that I've taken to the East Fremont area of downtown, they come and how it feels like it's right at the early days of what Austin was back when it was a lot smaller, and so we're excited about basically being at the beginning of transforming the downtown area to become the next 4th and 6th streets of Austin recognize and celebrate each person's individuality and we want their true personalities to come out and shine in the workplace and so when you tour our, our offices you'll see you know every desk or aisle there's a lot of creativity there and what we found is that when the you know there's so many people in corporate America where they're a different person at home on weekends versus when they come into the office on Monday and they end up leaving a little part of themselves or in a lot of cases a big part of themselves at home and for us, we, rather than focus on work-life separation, we actually really focus on work-life integration. We want you to be the same person, whether you're 
at home on weekends or in the office or after work hanging out with other Zappos employees. And the reason we want that is because we found that when people are comfortable truly being themselves, being uh, their, you know, letting their own individual, individual personalities shine, that's when the creativity comes out. That's when employees are actually passionate and productive and engaged with the company. And so that's part of the reason why this whole downtown project is really exciting for us. It's, it's about not just our offices being there, but we're going to be creating this environment outside the office and it, this whole ecosystem is just going to feed on itself and you know, not only be transformative for Zappos, but also transformative for downtown Las Vegas. We're thinking this move can not only make our employees happy, but you know, one of the complaints I've heard from a lot of people about why they might not want to move to Vegas is because Vegas, that their perception is Vegas doesn't really have much of a culture. It's a very transitive uh, type of population and really think that building out this downtown environment can you know, that is what's going to drive people to want to move to Vegas, uh, especially the tech community that really cares about the types of um, uh, bars and lounges and coffee shops and so on that we're seeing will hopefully over time really grow in, in population in downtown Vegas. So, it all starts with a C. Uh, several years ago, Zappos laid out what we call the three Cs. They were main areas of focus that we could align the entire company around. And the three Cs were clothing, culture, and customer service. But this year, Zappos has added a fourth C. And that fourth C is community. We announced last year that we'll be moving our headquarters from Henderson, a suburb of Las Vegas, to downtown Las Vegas. We think that we want to put as much work now into the community as we did into our culture, and not just create a great culture for work, but also create a great culture for live and play. Most people split their time between live, work, and play. I know that uh, when we were located in San Francisco, I spent about four hours a day commuting. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time for living or playing. Um, but what if you took all of that energy and you focused it into one central area or one central hub? We know that employees uh, that are inspired by a culture will contribute more to the building of a company. What about employees that are inspired by where they live and where they play? They'll be more inspired to contribute more to the community. Now, Las Vegas has grown rapidly over the past 20 years. Most of that growth, however, has come on the strip or the suburbs. What hasn't really grown is that, is that culture of community. We want our employees to have a sense of pride that they're from Las Vegas. Now, I don't know how many of you are from Las Vegas, but typically when somebody asks you where you're from, you always preface Las Vegas with San Francisco or New York or LA or, or, or somewhere else. And uh, we, we want the employees to have a connection and feel a part of the community. Uh, as, Tony says, and he's coined the term, we want to turn Sin City into Sim City. This is a map of uh, downtown Las Vegas. Now, what if there was a common vision that aligned education, that aligned housing, that aligned, small, that aligned local businesses? Well, at Zappos, we want to bridge that gap. We're working right now with the city of Las Vegas. We're working with uh, local businesses, and we're also working with a consulting group called the Creative Class, who specializes and has done extensive research in what it takes to build flourishing, thriving communities. But a lot of things are already happening downtown. This is the Smith Center. This will open next spring. And it, it will bring symphonies and Broadway plays such as Wicked to downtown Las Vegas. This is the uh, Cleveland Clinic and Lou Ruvo Brain Institute, which is going to bring medicine to downtown Las Vegas, and I know that's been a huge passion for Mayor Goodman. The 
This is a picture of Symphony Park, which will bring residential, restaurants, retail, and many other amenities to downtown Las Vegas. Our dream is to help build a flourishing community in downtown Las Vegas, much like Austin, Texas, that Tony mentioned. What are the components of a flourishing community? Well, the components as researched by the creative class involve a lot of different things. One of them is proximity. From your home to your work to your favorite restaurant, they need to be walkable. It's different transportation options, bicycles and buses, different housing options from high-end penthouses to low-income apartments and everything in between. It's green space where you can walk your pet or you can throw a frisbee. And then it's this uh, concept of third places. What is a third place? Well, a third place is a bookstore, a coffee shop, or a cafe. The key to a third place is that it's inexpensive and easily accessible. A good example of a third place might be Cheers, where everybody knows your name, or you know, big into television, so Friends, a central perk. I don't know where you can go in, relax, catch up, and uh, just be. Centr uh, third places have always been an important component of urban communities, as referenced by this picture. And here's a street side cafe today. Not much has changed. St. Mark's Square is a great example of a third place. For centuries, people have been gathering there to relax, enjoy the architecture, catch up, drink wine, and just watch people. But flourishing communities also depend on serendipitous relationships. Serendipitous relationships are fortunate discoveries made by accident. At Zappos, we create serendipitous relationships by only having one entry and one exit in and out of the building. This forces all of our employees to bump into one another that they normally wouldn't have. These interactions lead to relationships, and those, out of those relationships come some of our best ideas. We want to bring art, technology, music, and food downtown and create an environment that helps um, flourish or help support these flourishing relationships. But it's all about, the, it's, it's all about uh, making the most of the space that you have. So this is a good example. This was a parking lot in Pittsburgh that was turned into a park. And now think of all the relationships that are being created in this park versus that parking lot. The only relation, serendipitous relationships that would have been created in that parking lot were if two people got in a wreck. So. so what's the recipe of transformation? Well, it's everything that we've talked about. It's uh, authenticity, entrepreneurship, vision, music, and art. But most importantly, it's a common vision. And what's the value of all of that? What's the fourth C? Community, a thriving community that companies need to think more, think more beyond the impact of just their employees and their customers, but they need to think about the impact that they have on their cities and their communities. Let's try a video again. We'll go on to item yeah. number 29, discussion of possible action regarding a disposition and development agreement for the sale and lease back of land and improvements at 400 Stewart Avenue and 221 North Las Vegas Boulevard. This has been characterized as a real estate transaction one which would uh, encompass a transaction about bricks and mortar. Uh, I think that's a byproduct of uh, what's taking place today. But what I'm saying is from my heart today, uh, this, this is big. Uh, Mr. Shea, thank you very much. This is the major game changer that's gonna change the dynamic of downtown tremendously. Today is a transaction which is going to affect uh, forever the social fabric of our community. A corporation as large as Zappos, uh, world known, has decided to move here, and that's significant. To us. Uh, the way we think about ourselves and our inner core uh, will be different from this moment forward. The values of downtown properties have just changed. In, in just a conversation today at this meeting, the values of downtown have, have changed. There are certain watershed moments that uh, a city may celebrate consider when evaluating a historical perspective and uh, this is one of them. This is cool. Having an opportunity to interact with folks such as uh, Mr. Donner and all of his great developments that he has 
underway and bringing such great developers such as Mr. Shea and Zappos to the table. This is amazing. Las Vegas, we have been validated today as a result of this proposal. We've been legitimated today as a result of this proposal. We've gone, as they say in professional sports, to a whole new level. We're major league. And that is all that a council such as this ever dreamed of, ever desired, to be able to say that we participated just a little bit to create a major league city in Southern Nevada. To the Zappos family, welcome to downtown. Say a few words. This is um, a little surreal because it's kind of weird that we're trying to vote on something that's going to be in our future auditorium. And Shane <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, I think you're sitting in my future seat. <laughs> Say it's a great day. Raise your hand, please. So, with that, Mayor, my move is for approval. And if you all agree, say I do. I do. Let's vote, please. Motion carries. This is a day of uh, happiness. This is a day of joy. This is a day that's very, very special for the city of Los Angeles. So, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. What if you put the same passion, commitment, and energy into your cities and communities that you put into your companies? Would the world be a better place? Thank you. <laughs>